we thank the Lord for, for his faithfulness and for his mercy. Today, by the grace of God, I want to uh, talk to you. Uh, initially, I told our pastor what we're making. I wanted to talk to you on the keys, the key that God has really given to us. But I believe it has pleased the Lord that we look at this topic before us, a different topic, uh, but I believe it's still the same thing because God truly wants to bless us. And uh, I want to turn your Bible with me, first of all, to Psalm 1. Psalm 1, I want to read verses 1 through to 6. I will have read from verse 1 to 3, but I felt it's, let me probably just uh, read the entire scripture. Psalm 1, I want to read from verse 1 through to 6. And Psalm 1 said, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor seated in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law does he meditate day and night, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. He said, but the ungodly are not so. The story changes in verse 4. He said, but the ungodly are not so. They are like the shaft that the wind driveth away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly, it shall perish. Church, by the grace of God, I want to talk to us tonight on the life God blesses. If I had my way, I would have taken this message in, in, for the whole month in a series of four messages, looking at the characters, the qualities, the characteristics or the type of life that God blesses. I'm sure you know, if you go into school to want to learn medicine, you go to college of medicine, or you've done your pre-med, and now you, you want to learn. By the time you enroll in those subjects that can qualify to become a doctor, if you learn and you take your courses, you will discover that by the time you do those courses, you will, by the time you take those courses, you will become a medical doctor you will become a medical doctor. So if, the same, by the same vein, if you go into any subjects and you want to become a lawyer, you enroll as a lawyer, and by the time you enroll as a lawyer, you, you take all your courses, you take the exams, by the time you qualify, if you take all the exams and you, you, you take all those subjects and you pass those exams, at the end of your course, at the end of your training, what do you become? You become a lawyer. That means if you want to become a lawyer, whatever you want to become, if you enroll for that course and apply yourself this, and you meet the criteria, what will happen at the end of the, at the beginning, you enroll, you enroll, at the end, what happens? You qualify and you become whatever you want to become. The same thing, if you want taking a driving test, you want to become a driver, you enroll in a driving school, you do your theory test, you pass that, you do your practical, you pass that. If you're able to meet the standard and the criteria, at the end of it, what do you get? You pass, just like every other person. If you ask anybody, how did you get your driving license? How were you able to pass? They will tell you exactly this is what I did. So if you want to become a driver, qualify, you do the same thing that they did in the same vein. If you want to be blessed, if you want your life to be blessed, Look at the life of those that God truly blesses. If you look at the life of those that God truly blesses, if you now do what they did, because there's no partiality with God, because our God does not have favorites, but with him, such as trust in him, such as obey him, such as fulfill his command, they are bound to also experience his blessing. So that's why really I would have wanted to look at Four characters, look at the characteristics of their life, of different people in scripture, and also allude to people in our lifetime, contemporary time, that God has blessed. And look at it, what is it that they did that qualified them for God's blessings? What is it that they did that actually show, indicated God's blessings upon their life? We don't need the projection now. What is it that they did that qualified them for God's blessings? You will discover that if we do those things, we will be able to 
get the same blessing that those people got. And I believe within today, we will just look at, we may not be able to, we will look at, I'm sure, enough to be able to see the type of life God blesses. But we need to be careful also in life about distractions. I remember when I was young, uh, sometimes because um, uh, my mom would normally, because we're from a large family, will shop in large quantities and have things. But there are times they may not know that some certain things are running low. And I remember on one occasion, it has happened to my brother before, I think it happened to me on one occasion. Uh, I think she was about to cook or she had just started cooking. I said, oh, quick, friend, quickly go and get me this in the shops, in the market. And uh, it's a, um, a market, I think it's about 15 or 10 minutes away from my house. You have to come out of the house, go and we'll go to the market. So I can't remember exactly what she wanted me to buy. I'm not sure that I saw it or a seasoning or whatever. Go and get me this thing because I think either she has started cooking. But as a young boy at that time, I went... But but in that market also, not far from that market, it's also a football field, very big football field. And I think I saw some of my friends, they were not playing football, there, but they didn't have enough numbers. They said, oh, please, please, can you just let's quickly play five aside? And uh, as a young boy, I think I totally just forgot about the errand that was sent. Go and get this. And something was cooking. And uh, go and get this. And uh, I said, no, no. He said, no, no, no. Said, go, 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 quickly play. That's how I forgot about what I was asked to go and send, uh, or, 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 or the errand that was to run. Got distracted, got into football, and started playing football until somehow you get somebody that comes to, I mean, in those days, I mean, back in Africa, you know, somebody can come and pull your ear, you understand why, I mean, in the midst of your friends, and drag you that you have even forgotten. You got distracted, and I uh, know a number of times, I'm not saying any you listening to me, please don't, don't copy that. Because you, you're setting an errand, you 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 see where they are playing video game, you go into those things, you go into the shop, and you forget yourself. And begin to play the video game until by the time you finish, you even say, Oh, what have I even sent? What have I even sent to buy? You can't even remember what you are told to go and buy. You are forgotten. Well, when you get home, and uh, I remember I got home that day, those of you from Africa, you know, uh, when we were young, they call Dr. Do Good. You know that thing uh, when it goes on the back of your your buttocks, <laughs> you 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 can you you tell it. it they call doctor do good. If you don't know what it is, you can you you can find out for me when you see me. But anyway, I I I learned a lesson that day. Now, when you are sent on an errand, you don't get sidetracked by games or by the things of life. But do you know, God has actually given us just like we listen to the message of our general superintendent now. He has given us a commission. He has given us a message. But the truth is, many times, Satan will want to distract us with the challenges of life. Satan will want to distract us with a lot of things that sometimes we forget the assignments that God has placed before us. And that's why, generally, I want to tell you, please, watch out. Don't be sidetracked. Don't be distracted by whatever challenge or whatever the enemy is trying to bring your way. It may even be some of life goodies, but sometimes it may be some of life challenges and you forget that truly when Jesus was living, he gave a commission to the church, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. But you no, know, sometimes we get so bogged down by chasing after some temporary things that will only last for this world. But church, I want to plead with you. Whatever the blessings you are getting, let it be for the ultimate purpose that it will enable you or strengthen you the more to be an effective witness for God. And for those of us that God has blessed and things are going well with you, please seek not yet repose. Don't say, ah, I'm not exhausted. I want to rest. It's not the time to rest. Just like the prophet, after he had carried out God's assignment in 2 Kings chapter 13, and he, he, he now went and he was, he was sitting under the oak tree until the senior prophet, the old prophet, met him, deceived him, and lured him back. Please seek not yet repose. This is now, there's danger locking around. Let's be careful. But the truth is, like I said, today we want to look at the life that God blesses. Now, if you look at the characters in scripture, you can look at some people that God blessed. If we're taking our characters from scripture, looking at some people that God blessed in scripture. And if you look at their characters, we look at what only fight them for God's blessings. True, there are some of God's blessings that just comes to us. 
as a result of his grace. These blessings, we don't qualify for them. Not that we did anything, but God just bless us because truly our God is a gracious God. But for those blessings to remain, some of the blessings that God gives to us, God, God is a gracious God. He can just bless. You don't need to do anything before his grace. The, the, the blessing of salvation that he's sending his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to die for our sins, we did nothing for it. It was just his grace. But beyond that, there's some other blessings. God may just bless you with a good marriage, bless you with good health, Bless with that thing. That is just the graciousness of God. That's just the goodness of God. That's some blessings that God just blessed us with. You don't do something. You don't do anything for it. Nevertheless, some of God's blessings, if these blessings come to us as a result of his grace, as a result of his goodness, you not only, you, there are some things you must do for those blessings to remain in your life. Otherwise, those blessings can begin to diminish or you can lose them all together. So there are some things you must do. And also you must need to be able to position yourself in such a way that those blessings need to even abound in your life. Nevertheless, there are some things, if we are to attract God's blessings, there are some things you definitely need to do. And one of the examples, one of the case study I really want to look at, because really I wanted to look at four people and take them just one someone at a time, one session at a time. Today, if we have time, we'll look at two, but if not, we'll concentrate on just this one. And one of the things, one of the quality, one of the characteristics that you need in your life for God to bless you. And church, I want you, because we really want to look at the life that God blesses. And you want to look at your life so that God also can bless you. Just like these people have been blessed. It doesn't matter their background or where they come from. And one of the qualities you need in life for God to bless you is dependence on God. What do I say? I say dependence on God. You need to be dependent on God. If you want God to bless you, you see, you cannot expect God's blessings. On the one hand, you are saying you are coming to God. Oh, God, you are my God. And on the other hand, you are sending home. Oh, can you put that? Depending on what talisman, depending on this, said, you know, can you uh, help me send, uh, uh, pay this money to that person? Let them pray for me. Let them do this. And they pray. And the people, you know, they are not praying to the true God. You know, they are not, you know, they are doing some other things. You cannot, on the one hand, say you are serving God, and then on the other hand, you are doing you are, you are, you are serving idols. Hmm. That kind of life does not attract blessing from God. True, there are people who have gotten blessings, so-called blessings, earthly blessings, uh, wealth, fame, or whatever, other than the source of God. You will discover that those blessings are not long-lasting. Those blessings does not ultimately accrue to, towards eternity, towards eternal, uh, spending eternity in the presence of God. And that's not the kind of blessing we are talking about. Many people have come to power, come to faith by selling their soul. Ultimately, they, will, they have the story to tell. Many of those people, if they don't die mysteriously, even if uh, Satan will still find a way to come and still bring them down from their uh, uh, place of glory. And many times they end up in shame. But the kind of blessing we are talking about is the blessing that the Bible tells us in Proverbs chapter. Um, the Bible tells us in Proverbs chapter ten, verse twenty-two, that the blessing of the Lord it maketh rich and added no sorrow to it. Those are the type of blessing we are talking about. The blessing that God gives you and there's no sorrow. You understand? The blessing, the blessing that maketh rich is a blessing of the Lord that make it rich, and then it does not add sorrow with it. But the blessing that comes from the devil, it may make you rich temporarily, it may make you famous, but I'm telling you, the sorrow, <laughs> apart from the sorrow in eternity, the sorrow is usually untold. But by the grace of God, the life we're looking about, we want to look at the first character we want to look at, and probably that may be the only character we may look at because of time, is Jabez. And Jabez was a lie. If you look at his background, his background was not something you can envy. Even his conception, we are told, at the time the mother would be given birth to him, the name he was given was not an enviable name. It wasn't a name anybody would want to be called if you have your way, but the mother gave him the name Jabez. Why? Because they said he was born with sorrow. The circumstance surrounding his birth, even though the scripture did not give us too much information, but there's enough information to know that it wasn't a pleasant circumstance. And here, growing up, we discovered that he, uh, if you look at second, if you look at that first Chronicles chapter four, 
when the Bible started giving us the genealogy, all the people in the, in, 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 in the line of Judah, there was nothing to write to me about. About many of the people there that the Bible was talking about, nothing to write to me about. He talks about the sons of Judah, Pharaoh, Hezron, and Kama, and Ur, and Shuba. Don't give me their name, just name, name, name. But by the time it came to verse 9, and mentioned the name of Jabez, the Holy Spirit could not but take a pause. The Holy Spirit could not but take a pause and, 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 and give more information about this person, even though his background, even though his initial birth, and he started with that, was not, was not something to write to me about. So in First Chronicle chapter 4, I read verse 9. It says, and Jabez, First Chronicle chapter 4, I read verse 9, it says, and Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. He was that's the characteristic of his life. That's a quality. He was a more honorable person than his brethren. But we're now told that his mother called his name Jabez, saying, I bear him with sorrow. And I mean, any human being, tell me, most times you, a woman or a man, when they are pregnant, they are joyous. You look forward to pregnancy. I'm not talking about pregnancy that come and say it's not rape. But generally speaking, most people look forward to it. People pray for it. And when they are pregnant, you are expectant, you are joyous. But for your mother to have pregnancy, and you, whatever the nature of the pregnancy, and at the end of it, you are not happy, and you call the child sorrow, it tells a lot of story. But here, Jabez looked at the circumstance of his birth. He looked at him growing up. He said, ah, Lord, there must be a change. I, want, I, I know that, yes, you bless people. And, and Jabez did five things. And those are things, remember, these five things can be summarized as dependence on God. And I want to plead with you today, please, my people, my brethren, if God is to bless us, and indeed God will bless us, and tonight, by the grace of God, believe God, I'm going to pray with us, and you are going to pray. I'm going to ask for God's blessings upon your life. But let these characteristics also be found in your life. And that is dependence of God on God. And what does dependence on God mean? I will break it down into these five things that we're going to examine. Through the prayer of Jabez, look at it. He says, number one, and Jabez, you understand? Call on the God of Israel. He called on the God of Israel. Now, before you can call on the God of Israel to do something for you, there must be, number one, a personal relationship with the God of Israel. So that means Jabez had, number one, he had a personal relationship with the God of Israel. You know, many people today, what they will do with their born with the name Jabez, that horrible name, as some, some people may claim, if they are born with that name Jabez, that name Sorrow, that anywhere you are going to, they will call you Sorrow, Sorrow. And if you yourself, you get somewhere, Sorrow. Who would want to identify with Sorrow? If somebody is carrying the name Sorrow, Sorrow today, I'm telling you, nobody will want to even employ them. If you are trying to do a business, you are starting up and you say, let me employ people. I say, yeah, yeah, let me feel your name. What's your name? Sorrow. Eh? Sorrow, please, bye-bye. We don't want sorrow in this place. That was the way it was with Jabez. Nobody was, when children are playing football, they will let you serve aside. They, nobody even wants sorrow because uh, Jabez will make us lose the game. Anything you want to do, which woman will want to marry sorrow? You are, want to marry joy. You want to come into marriage and then the name of your husband, Mrs. Sorrow, please. Bye-bye. He said, no, no, his life was not. But you know, many people today, they will change their name. But you know, there's no record of Jabez changing his name. He didn't change his name, but he changed his destiny. And other people may think by just changing their name, yes, their destiny will change. Ah, uh ah. -uh. You see, that's the mistake of many people. They may say, oh, it's my name that's affecting me. Therefore, let me change my name. <laughs> you can change your name. If you don't do what Jabez did, a change of name is not the answer. It's not the solution. There's no record that Jabez changed his name. True. If you want to bear a name that glorifies God, there's nothing wrong in changing it to glorify God. But that is not what changes your destiny. What changes your destiny? Jabez did not change his name physically, but he changed his destiny spiritually. And he changed his destiny spiritually uh, uh, by what? Having a personal relationship with God. Having a personal relationship with God. If you want your life at the end of your time on earth to be summarized by the word success, that truly this person was successful, not from the point of view of the world, but from the point of view of God, God will say this was a successful life. Then a personal relationship with God is inevitable. It is inevitable. If you want your life to be summarized with success, a purpose, you, you need to have that. And so I plead with you here. It's not just coming to church. 
If you're here and truly you cannot, hands on heart, so that your name has been written in the Lamb's book of life, please, I plead with you tonight, enter into a personal relationship with God. Tonight, surrender your life to Jesus so that you can now plug yourself in and meet the criteria for him to pour his blessing upon you so that your life and you will be able to position yourself for his blessing in your life. So your life can qualify for the blessing that God bestows on his soul. So a personal relationship with God, Jabez, Jabez called on the God of Israel. What else can we see in that prayer? Deuteronomy, uh, sorry, uh, First Chronicles, I open to First Chronicles again, chapter 4, and I want to read verse 10. First Chronicles chapter 4, read verse 10. It tells us, and Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed and enlarge my coasts, and that thy hand might be with me. But let's stop there. Say, oh, that thou would, and Jabez did what? Called on the God, you understand, of Israel. And he said, oh, that thou would have blessed me indeed and enlarge my coasts. Here we see another characteristics of the life that God blesses. What is the characteristics? We see here, he called. But before he called on the God of Israel, he wanted a change in his life. He wanted a change. And that means he had purpose for living. He had purpose for living. He didn't just, uh, he didn't just give up uh, to circumstances. He didn't just say, well, my mother has come in sorrow. They've lost hope in me. And uh, life is throwing all kinds of things at me that things are not going my way. I just surrender to faith. No, he did not do that. And so my people, I want to plead with you, whatever life is throwing at you at the moment, whatever in your relationship with your husband, things are just not, unfair. no, let me give up. Whatever you have attempted and you feel, uh, no, just know God does not create failures. He does not say, if uh, those of you who are into IT or in engineering or manufacturing, or those of you who are into creative art, you are sewing a dress, you make dress or you paint, you don't want to paint anything that is a flaw. You want to whatever you're painting or sculpt you're uh, trying to craft, you want to showcase it. And those tenders, those nature, them as a result of God's nature within us, who does not create failures? A failure, whatever you think you are attempting and you are not, don't have a purpose for living. His initial beginning for Jabez was nothing to write to me about, but he decided to have a purpose for living. And the truth is that God does not create failure. Don't allow your past to hold you captive. Have a purpose from tonight. Say, Lord, what is my creative purpose? What you allowed me to be here? What is it? And God, God will show you. And you want to live up to it. And you will live up to it in Jesus' name. But then he now called on the God of heaven. We're told that he called. You understand? Jabez called on the God of Israel. Say, oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed. Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed. He petitioned. That's the third thing we see. He petitioned the God of heaven, the God of Israel. My people, please. Ah, many times we wish, and as Christians, we have a lot of we have, we have a lot of weapon. You see, brethren, uh, I was going to talk to all before on the keys to heaven's blessings, but now let me tell you. Assuming you have a door. And you are very strong. And this door is made of iron bars. You are trying to get into a gate. This door is like a big gate. Try to go into either an apartment or go into something. And you are banging the door. The door. You are pushing the door. But the door is not shaking because it's really, it's really uh, solid. Solid. Planted with concrete to the ground. And you can't put the door. And you are very bad. Two, of you, two men, you come with your fist, you are moving. And even a little boy just comes, but he has the key to the door, the key to the gate, and he uses the key and just unlocks the door and he opens it without any effort. You see, the same thing generally in life. There are some things, if you don't have the right key, you may just be banking your head against the brick wall, banking your head against it, and you try to shake that, and the door is not moving, nothing is giving way. What you need is not exactly all those energy. It will say, Lord, give me the key. Give me. And the key, I'm telling you, is petitioning the God of Israel. And God has given us that. So I say, come unto me. Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 3. Our moderator told us tonight. Say, come unto me. God has given us that weapon, given us that, that, that open check. Come unto me. And I will answer you. 
He had given up that assurance that he will answer us. Many of us were not calling near enough as we should, not petitioning the God of Israel, not petitioning the God of heaven. And we were told, and Jabez called on the God of heaven. And when he, he petitioned the God of Israel, brethren, in your challenge with your husband, in your situation with those children, and you're just thinking, and you're kind, right? No, have you petitioned God? Have you really lean on it? You see, when you depend on God, you will not be scheming, okay? Ah, this exam, if I do this, or this, no, this challenge before you, this petition before you, take, learn to take your challenges. Learn to take your difficulty. Say, but this is just a small thing. I don't want to disturb God. What do you mean you don't want to disturb God uh, for this small thing? So do you think there's a big thing for God? There's nothing big or small. As far as God is concerned, it's with that look at big problems, small problems. Whatever your problem, I have small or I have big. Learn to take your challenges. Learn to take your problems. Learn to take your difficulties to God in prayer. That is what shows you are dependent on God. Don't try to skim it. You understand? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean up to your understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. And he will walk, he will direct your path. That was the Proverbs even for today. If you read Proverbs daily, every day, every chapter for, for the right day, you will have read that proverb today. Lean not in your understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and walk direct your path. So learn to take your problem, your challenges, your difficulties to the Lord in prayer. If you feel you are under any limitations, say for example, you are coming here, God has opened some door for you, but it's with this one, there's still some limitations. Take it to God. Or if you feel you're under a curse, I may be, oh, it's, oh, this is an ancestral curse working against me. I need that. Uh, I, I can't get a break to, oh, this is a generational curse working against me. Oh, this is a tribal curse. Whatever the curse, I'm telling you, just take it to God in prayer. Let, just like Jabez, he knew things were working against him, but he decided to pray. Brethren, our problem many times is that we, we don't practice this, there are many people that God has blessed practice, petitioning the God of Israel. He petitioned the God of Israel. He took it, you understand? And it doesn't matter how long that curse must have been on you. It doesn't matter how long that limitation you have been going through has been on you. It doesn't matter how powerful those curses may be. Our God is more powerful. And the truth is that no one created, there's no one in existence, whether it's Satan, Satan was created by God. There's no one existing that can that, 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 that is so powerful, you understand, that, that can resist the blessing of God. And there's no man that can curse anybody that God has blessed. So when you call upon God tonight, say, Lord, bless me. Bless me like Jabez God. And if God blesses you, there's nobody that can curse you. And there's no curse that can continue to operate in your life when the blessings of God come upon your life. And tonight, by the grace of God, we are going to pray. You are going to pray, and I'm going to pray with you and agree with you that the blessing of God will come upon your life. And I'm telling you, believe God. There's no curse. However long, whatever tribe, whatever generation, it doesn't take uh, two years, one year, two months, two weeks to break those curses. As long as we pray by faith, to say, Lord, let your blessing come upon your life tonight, it will break and shatter any curse. And the truth is that no man can curse he whom God has blessed. And tonight, the Lord will bless you. I didn't hear your amen. I said the Lord will bless you. So the truth, petition the God amen. of Israel. Can you petition amen. the God? Petition of God. The Lord will pronounce upon you afresh his blessings tonight. And the truth is that when Jabez was also petitioning, in your petition, look at the petition of Jabez. If you look at it there again, he says, and Jabez, verse 10 of First Chronicles chapter 4, the Bible says, And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, oh that thou wouldest bless me indeed. That breaks every curse indeed. That first statement, Oh, Lord, oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed. And he goes, Yes, you are blessed. Which curse will now operate? All curse are shattered. I have a long. So that's number one. Look at his prayer. He prayed for blessing. Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed. That's, and, 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 and not only did he pray for God to bless me indeed, he also now says, and enlarge my course. Brethren, it's time for enlargement. It's time for God. Enlargement even spiritually in your calling. 
in this territory, you understand? God has given you an area, a church, a pastor, a ministry, it souls. This year we have challenged ourselves. At least let's multiply ourselves. Go more so. Not, not just physical enlargement. And even whatever enlargement you're doing, it is so that your life can be a witness. Don't look at this any gift, any blessing that is just a, a, a temporal, you'll be temporal. You want to look more beyond the temporal blessing. To the eternal blessing, but nonetheless, the temporal blessing. I mean, don't we, we don't neglect that because James here said, Enlarge my hopes. You need to pray for enlargement for growth. Are you a single brother? Pray. It's time you are, you are of manageable age. Pray. Are you a single sister? And you're saying, Lord, say, Lord, it's not even wrong. Say, Lord, enlarge me now. Enlarge my hope. Are you already married? You want God to enlarge you? Lord, enlarge me now. And also, and that thy hand might be with me. You see, when he said that thy hand might be with me, the hand of God, we don't have to what term, like I said, is the power of God. Is that power? So, Lord, let your power be with me. The power to fulfill your calling. The power to fulfill for your life. Many times we are too weak. If you are feeling weak now or feeling discouraged, I don't think I can continue. It's because that power, you are always still petitioning God. Still petitioning God. And in petitioning, there are five things also under that petition. Is number one, he's praying for blessing. Number two, he's praying for enlargement. Number two, he's praying for the power of God, and the power of God might be with me. And that power of God is that thy hand might be with me. And he, he, he prayed for that power to fulfill your calling. And also that he, he prayed for he prayed for also not only enlargement, he says, and that thou wouldest keep me from evil. He prayed for guidance. He prayed for guidance. And church, you want to pray for guidance, you don't want to waste your time or waste your life on what God has not ordained for you. You don't want to labor in another man's vineyard this year. You don't want to continue to pursue. At the end of the day, I have spent five years trying to chase this course, and I'm now starting all over again. You don't, if you have prayed for guidance, God will tell you, my son, my daughter, please don't, do, don't waste your time. Don't pursue. This is what I've ordained for you. And you'll be able to start early. Many times people have wasted resources, invested in, in, in businesses, invested in ventures that God has not ordained for them, only for them to realize after they wasted money, wasted resources, wasted their life. This year, avoid that. Pray for guidance. Pray for guidance. And if you have wasted time, don't worry tonight. God will bless you. Come, come again. Pray for divine guidance. That God, that thou would escape me for me, that I have my be with me. What's something with you is his part to fulfill your calling and guiding you. Pray for guidance tonight. And also, don't waste your time on life on things God has not ordained or, or, or not his assignment for you. Pray that God will keep you from evil and that thou would keep me from evil. We live in an evil world. Brethren, we live in an evil world. Time will fail me to tell you that truly, if God bless him, now comes upon you, be prepared. I always tell people when they say, oh, God bless me, bless me. I said, Do you know the other side of the coin to blessing is envy? Blessing attracts the envy of the world. So if you are not prepared to face up to the envy of the world, then be careful how you pray for blessing. Because as the blessing of God comes, whether for Daniel that he was promoted, his colleagues will envy him. Whether for Joseph that will be exalted, giving a dream of exaltation, his brother will envy just to what in this life. If in the place of they promote your things, there will be envy. So if you don't want envy, then be careful you pray. But why shouldn't you prepare for envy? You don't pray for the grace. He goes with the territory. So pray that God also to keep you from evil. Pray that God will keep you from evil. Because there's a lot of people with some people, when, they, when the blessing comes, unfortunately, they don't know how to manage the blessing and they double it to evil. Satan comes and says, Tell me, so you want to pray, God, keep me from, keep you from sin. But the sin is very deadly. It's a number one killer and stopper of God's blessing. Run away from sin. You see, Joseph. He already knew that God will bless him. And God was prospering him. When he was in Potiphar's house, whatever he did was prospering. But when Mrs. Potiphar was casting her eyes on him, Joseph knew if he yielded to that temptation, the highest rank Joseph would have gone to would have been the chief baker, the chief butler. He would have been the, the, the chief cook in Potiphar's house, the chief supervisor. That's the highest. Nobody would have heard about him in Egypt. And nobody would have been talking about Joseph even now. But he ran away from that sin. He ran away from that evil. Even though temporarily he suffered. He suffered for two years. Nonetheless, he persevered. That takes me to quality number four. Even in the life of Jabez, persevere. Learn to persevere. You understand? Persevere in spite of obstacles. 
Many times we like because we now live in a microwave society. As we ask God to bless us, some of us want the blessing overnight. Sometimes some blessings come overnight. You see, if you want uh, some kind of tree to grow, you can plant it and it will grow overnight. But if you want an oak tree, it takes years, even before it will shoot out from the roots. The same thing, depending on the level of your success, the, Joseph, depending on where God was taking it, he needed to still be in that object for two years, prison for two years, still being cooked and prepared before he will come out and be the prime minister. The same thing, depending on the level of the God's blessing for you and it's coming for your life, there are some obstacles, but persevere. You are your husband. Persevere. Don't just um, don't just say ah, you nah, don't go for quick fixes. Quick fixes. I need to go for quick fixes. No, you need to persevere. There's going to be obstacle. Just know I'm doing what God wants me to do. I'm I'm petitioning Him. I've proposed my life. I've I've I've, I've done what He needs to do. I, I, I just continue to persevere because hey, your blessings will come. Hey, your son will write. Just continue to position yourself. And when you are petitioning God, I mean, learn to pray very well. I remember a, a particular man that, I mean, you learn to present your challenges to the Lord. A man had this kind of message. He said, ah, learn to present his problem. And that day he went to, he went to church. By the time he got back home, I'm sure some of you might have heard this story too before. By the time he got back home, his wife for a long time, I mean, they didn't go to church that day. And the mouseman just came, saw the wife by the door, and just carried the wife and carried her up. The wife was so happy. She said, ah, in this marriage, all these years, I've been wanting my husband to touch me, to at least go, go spend time with me. God, oh, today, ah, thank God, he, he came and just carried the woman and carried her up, and after a while, put her down. Then later in the evening, the wife really now uh, prepared a good meal. That all this while, that this man, not even told me, came to the prepared a good meal and brought it. By the time the man finished it, he said, ah, honey, what even made you come me today? And really, I mean, and the man, by the time he to ate a good meal, ah, he said, God, today, truly, church, you, you, are, you, are, you, you did you, you, what you said in church truly was right. And what was he told in church? Because he was told when he went to church that when you get home, don't be quiet, just carry your problem to the Lord. And when he got home, he sees it's his wife, it's his problem. That's why God carried his wife, carried her to the Lord. And uh, the wife obviously just thinking was kind. So when he asked the wife, why, why did you say well, uh, the pastor said, Will you carry our problem to the Lord? And since you are my problem, I carried you. Unfortunately, he just deflated the wife. But the truth is that you, you, you whatever the problem, take it genuinely to the Lord, petition the Lord, but you still continue to persevere in spite of the obstacle. But then one thing you see, Jabez in his prayer, you can tell that he patterned his life after God's words. And truly, if you want God to bless you, you will need to pattern your life. Pattern your life. Not after brothers also and so sisters also and so. Not after Mr. Trying to compete with other people. No. Stay in your own lane. You don't know what God is planning for you. Other people may be getting it where ah, you see husband and wife things are falling in right places for them. You don't know what God is placed for you. Don't be envious. Pray for them. Thank God. Oh, they've had more children. Bless God. Your own time is coming. When yours come, it depends. When you want to, like I said, when you want to plant just beans or plant corn that grows in three months, yes, it will show. But when you want to plant an oak tree, it takes years. And God, it depends on what God wants to do. And you know, she already had six children. I was say uh, uh, some people just marry the husband. They, they, they are like man. They don't, uh, they don't, they, they don't have children for the husband. I don't know what they are still doing in the husband's house. Those are the kind of words Penina was saying. And it was, it was, it was sort of hard to Hannah. And the Hannah may want to be tired and say, Oh, Penina's son, can you go? Say, Please don't send my son. You want to send somebody? You gotta have your own. And Hannah will go again crying. But who can tell me here? Any Bible student, the name of Penina's son or daughter? Anybody? No. They're just there. But you can tell the name of Anna. Anna's son. It, because God was looking for a prophet. The mightiest prophet that will be in Israel. And he was looking, Anna, do you qualify to be the mother of this prophet? Do you qualify? And when Anna came to the point, I said, Lord, ah, it's not, don't give me a child anymore because I want to show off. Don't give me. When she now had the right attitude and said, Lord, if you give me a man child, she was specific. Give me a man child, I will give him back to you. He will serve you not to show. God said, yes, you are now qualified. 
God was looking for a prophet. Israel was saying, God needs a prophet, but who is the woman that will be qualified to be the mother of this great prophet Samuel? And when Anna qualified herself, positioned herself, said, Lord, give me a man child, and I will give it back to you. God said, no problem. Now that you give it back to me, he gave her five more also. She asked for one, God gave her five extra. God will give you more than what you're asking. Tonight, we're going to go to God to pray. You are going to pattern yourself. When next, by the grace of God, God allowed, I want to show you characteristics of other people in scripture that God blessed. So when we look at those characteristics, as we pattern our own life, as God has no favorites, as there's no favoritism with God, as we do those things, just like if you want to become a lawyer, see the courses that lawyer did, see the exams that they did, go for the training, at the end, you are bound to be that same lawyer. You want to pass an exams, you want to pass uh, your driving, follow the course that the people that passed it. If you follow through and apply yourself, you become the same thing if we follow and do the things. It doesn't matter your background and it doesn't matter. He said, you want to have a good home. Your husband is, uh, is misbehaving sometimes. He's behaving like what to call coconut head. You don't go and give fire for fire. Look at what you are at God's word. Don't say, don't say, Uncle, don't say, I won't do this. That's not God's word. You don't take it over and take it to the Lord in prayer. Tonight, you will see the difference. And God is going to come upon your life. God is going to bless you tonight. Just even to, we only look at just dependence on God. Brethren, there are still a few other things. Uh, by God's grace, if I come, if the Lord allows, I'm going to show you the life God blesses, the various characteristics that as you do these things, I'm telling you, God has no choice but to bless us. Let's go to God to pray. Let's go to him right now. We want to talk to God because tonight the Lord is going to bless us. Your story must change. This month of March, you are going to march forward. This month, you are going to march for every change. And if God blesses you, tell who oh, betide that devil that wants to curse if he can't. Nobody can curse him who God has blessed. And tonight, you want God to bless you. But remember, remember Jabez, it may not have been opportune to hear the kind of message you are hearing tonight. Jabez, he presented his petition before the Lord. Number one, he had a personal relationship with God. He said, Lord, you are the God of Israel. You are the one that created me. Oh, Lord, you must have created me for a purpose, not as a failure. Lord, I surrender to your purpose. I have a relationship with you. I come, forgive me of my sins. And Lord, tonight I'm coming. Come and bless me indeed. Divinely intervene in my family. Divinely intervene in my home. Oh, Lord, divinely intervene in my home because I want a change. So tonight, I want you to talk to God. Let's pray and say, Lord, bless me indeed right now. We're going to pray together. Whatever your needs, healing, revival, divine intervention, just present it like Jabez. There's going to be increase. There's going to be enlargement. Let's pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you because you're a good God. We thank you because you have brought us, oh God, to the beginning of this new month, this month of marching forward. Lord, we have, we have stayed too long where we are. Oh Lord, in our walk with you. Oh Lord, I'm not praying. For as many, oh God, are truly, oh God, I say, Lord, they want to renew their strength. They want to renew their relationship with you. They want you, oh God, to be their God. As many as have confessed their sins tonight, Lord, I pray, let the blood of Jesus avail for them. Forgive them their sins, and Lord, let their names be written in the Lamb's Book of Life in Jesus' name. You know, right now, God, I'm asking and I'm praying for every one of your children on this platform and those listening to me right now. Lord, whatever the yoke of the enemy under which they are laboring, oh Lord, whatever the curse, oh Lord, whatever the limitation, right now, God, by the anointing of your spirit, I break those yokes, I break those limitations, and I remove those limitations right now in Jesus' name. Father, I pray, I, I hear who you blesses is blessed. And Father God, I pray that this night, come and let your blessing rest upon every one of your children listening to me right now in Jesus' name. And any one of their family member connected with you that they presented before you, Lord, whatever the petition, I pray wherever that individual may be, let your Holy Spirit begin a work of grace, begin a work in the life of those people, and Lord, let there be a divine turnaround even right now in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, as many as I pray for enlargement, 
Pray for increase. Pray for divine intervention. Pray for success. Pray for a breakthrough. Lord, this and not. Let your blessing, let there be a speedy answer to those petitions in Jesus' name. And Lord, I pray, put a testimony and put laughter in every heart, even here present in Jesus' name. Lord, the grace to persevere, to continue to be witnesses for you and not to be distracted. Grant unto each and every one of us in Jesus' name. Keep us from evil and from the evil one. And Lord, help us that none of us will miss our destiny. Empower us afresh to continue to run this race. And Lord, open us, help us to be sensitive to those things the devil have been using to lure us away, wasting our time. Lord, this time, help us to recover, recover from those, those distractions. And Lord, I pray this weekend, oh Lord, and this month, let your blessing like never before come upon our life in Jesus' name. Affect your healing in our lives. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord.